Okay, welcome back to part two. I have fast forwarded the, the action to uh, round six. We're on round six here and under the hard uh, level, um, the, I don't know if you can see that in the sunshine, but the um, foe has a resource value of two, so keep bear that in mind. Um, as you can see, a few more things have happened on the battlefield. You'll notice on the Norman side, the foe side, there are gaps in the battlefield. Now that wouldn't happen in multiplayer and it doesn't happen on the player side because the player plays as the multiplayer rules. If a card uh, disappears or is destroyed, cards behind them shift forward to fill up any gaps. But that doesn't happen for the uh, solo uh, bot or AI. So we are just starting round six. So we check uh, victory conditions, plenty of cards to draw. Um, we discard down to six cards. We've got five, so no need to do that. So we still get to draw two cards. Right, and um, then we ready all cards on the battlefield. As you can see, there's only one card that's tired, and that is poor old Saxon Cure. Uh, so he is now ready, and we are ready to do our deployment. As always, the player starts first in the round, and I am simply going to throw this boy into the fray, uh, Elfric. So um, I'm going to throw him in wedge number one. He costs uh, three resources, so I'm going to tire the old Saxon Cure to pay for one. There's one resource. And then simply, uh, I will uh, just get rid of these two. Discard these two for a total of three resources. Right, now play passes back, passes over to the foe. Now, the very first thing on the foe's round, uh, they will check for ranged at attacks. They do have a ranged attack here with the Flemish Bowman, so that Bowman, excuse me, is tired, and he will do one damage to one enemy up to three rows away. The range is one, two, three. So I can attack currently all the cards in this uh, wedge and I get to choose. Um, normally the um, the ranged attacks will target other ranged units. I don't have any in this wedge or on the board at all. Um, so I get to choose and I will um, I'll have him destroy this fella. It's probably not a good choice, but I'm just going to uh, show that. And he is destroyed because he has only one health and the uh, Flemish Bowman do one damage. So that was the foe's turn. It turns back to us. And this time I am going to... Um, I'm going to play Shire Levies. They flop down. Let's put them back in there. Um... They have a solo action, and normally that's uh, for when you're playing him as a bot, but under the rules you're allowed to choose either the response or the solo option. Uh, but I'm going to keep it hold, keep hold of it for the response action, So, uh, but I need to pay for that. Uh, so let's get rid of uh, local advantage. That would do it like local advantage. Right, play passes back to the normal side. Um, they have no more range attacks, so they will now try to deploy a card. And to deploy a card, they have, as we said, from the grid, they have a resource value of two. Normally you would add on any green rosettes on the battle side, battlefield, but they have none. So currently they have a resource value of two. So you just turn cards until you find a two cost or less card. And that's a four, five there. And that is a one, so we have an event. Now, uh, the foe will only deploy an event if it can do the action described. So this says, destroy one enemy tactics card. Now, I currently have no enemy tactics card. I, sorry, I currently have no tactics cards in play. So that cannot be done. So that will simply be discarded and we carry on drawing till we can find a card that we can deploy. This is another event, it costs two, so we can afford it. Can we do the action? Um, you can do choose to do either action, but currently can't do the um, uh, the objective because it's not in play so instead I can play one card for free so quite simply choose the next card and play it if possible yes we can this is an attachment and attachments for the um, for the foe 
um, quite simply go on the leader's wedge if possible. If not possible, then uh, the player will get to choose. Otherwise, we just throw on um, the attachment onto that wedge. So that's possible. That's uh, we can do that. So I just grab two might tokens and bash them on there for the foe, and that is the foe's turn. So back to us. Um, let me see now. Uh, we will, I'll tell you what I'll do actually, just to show you. I'll show you how the Agile action works, I'm sure you know. Basically, all you do is uh, move this card to a different wedge. So I tire it to do the action, and then I simply move him up to wedge number one, from wedge number three. Uh, and then because there's a gap in the, in the field, this card will push forward. Right, back to the Norman side. I'm not saying any of these decisions are good, I'm just saying this is what you can do. Right, so they're going to deploy a card. There's no more ranged attacks to do, so uh, they're going to deploy a card. And they are still on a value of 2. Now this fella is a 2, so uh, he will uh, go into play. Now when you deploy a card onto the battlefield for the foe, the uh, priority spaces are, uh, the order you place them is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So the first available space for him is right there. And he goes in. Any when played, uh, oh, he does have a when played. Now, he does have the family cost uh, of minus two, but we ignore that. Uh, he does have a when played, but it's learned. The foe always ignores learned. So then it passes back to ourselves. And uh, why not? Let's, um, let's throw this Saxon Mace Men on. And to, uh, to pay for him, I'll just discard my last card. Then play passes back to the Normans. Uh, no ranged attacks, so we go to the deck again. And this time, the resource value is now three, because they have two on the grid and one on the battlefield. So they can afford cards up to the cost of three. This is cost of two, so he will go into play. This is a ranged uh, unit. Some more bowmen. This is the Breton bowmen this time. Now, normally, as I said, the next available space would be this because one, two, three, four, five, six. However, ranged um, units or ranged cards will always try to target, will always try to, will always prioritize being placed in the leader's wedge, same wedge as the leader. So I will skip a space there and to place him down. Uh, now, uh, when he is placed, you normally take the action. So um, whenever a uh, ranged action is taken, the card is tired, and he deals one damage to one enemy up to three rows away. So tire him. One, two, three. Uh, and again, all attacks, um, they would normally, from any card, would normally target uh, ranged units first. Then after that, the player gets to choose. So I can either uh, damage Harold or my Saxon Cure. Now my Saxon Cure is only one health, so I'm going to choose to damage Harold. And that is that. Play bass is back to me. Uh, I could take actions from the field, but I don't think I have anything I want to do. I have no cards in hand, so I'm going to pass. When you pass, the play passes back to the Norman. Um, they will then carry out all their range attacks that aren't currently tired. And then they will play, uh, uh, go on to deploy one last card. So the current resource value is three. So we flip through for a three cost card. Here's one here, and it's the Flemish Horseman. Horseman. Again, the first available space according to the priority grid is there, and that's where they go. Um, they would gain plus one might if they were in row three, but they're not, they're in row two, so they will go there. And then the normal player passes, and that is the end of the deployment phase. We then go on to the wedge phase. Neither of us are at Hastings, so that stops there. And we go to the objective phase. Quite simply, any cards that aren't tired, we would calculate for the Normans. It's a zeal battle. So we'd calculate the zeal, which is zero, one, four, ignore that because it's tired, but it doesn't have one in it, five, uh, six, and tired, so it doesn't count. So six minus one is five. The Normans would do five damage um, to that objective, which would take this up to, as they already had two on, take it up to seven, so that the objective is defeated. And we would do the same on this side, but because it's a might uh, attribute, we would do it with the might. 
Um, but no need to do that. I can do that off camera. So that shows you that. That's the end of round six.